Kraft presents The Great Gildersleeve. Yeah. Each week at this time, the Kraft Cheese Company presents for your enjoyment Harold Perry as The Great Gildersleeve, written by Leonard L. Levinson. We'll hear from the great Gildersleeve in just a moment. But first, let me remind you that fall is coming in winter, too. And when chilly winter weather really comes, your family is going to need plenty of wholesome, nourishing energy food. Now, one reliable and economical source of energy is parquet margarine, made by Kraft. Yes, this delicious new margarine called parquet is a protective food of high nutritional value. And to make it even better for you, Kraft adds important vitamin A to parquet margarine's natural goodness. 9,000 units to every single pound. Now, of course, all this wholesome food value wouldn't do much good if your family didn't like parquet margarine. Well, we think they will. Thousands of American families do. Yes, they like parquet margarine's delicate, satisfying flavor for table use, for baking, and for pan frying. Best of all, parquet margarine is economical, yet it's made by Kraft to the same high standards as all Kraft food products. But why not find out for yourself? Yes, why not try a pound or two of wholesome, nourishing parquet margarine tomorrow? Just ask for parquet, P-A-R-K-A-Y. And now for the adventures of the great Gildersleeve. Yes, and now I'll check the grocery bill. Nine and nine is 18, and eight is 28. Uh, no, 26. And seven is, uh, let me see, 33 and five is... Uh, what are you doing, Uncle 33 Moore? and... Uh, oh, now I've lost my place. Sorry, I disturbed you. Yeah, that's all right, Marjorie. I was just checking your household expenses. Part of my job is guardian for you and Leroy, you know. But we never had any trouble with little things like that before. We never had to count a Judge Hooker before either. Why, that dyspeptic little judicial blunder. Oh, now, Uncle Moore. I'll let you get on with your work. Yes. Yes, I'll have to start all over again. Nine and nine is 18, and eight is 28. Uh, no, 26. And seven is... Uh, Excuse me, Mr. Gill, to see you. Ham or beef? And seven... Lost it again. Ham or beef what? Filling. What filling? Sandwich filling. What sandwich? That's what I want to know. Ham or beef? Uh, cheese. Yes, sir. Yes. Nine and a cheese sandwich is 18 and... Uh, 26. Well, I got it right the first time. And seven is... Say, Uncle uh, Mort, supposing I could buy a swell airplane motor cheap, what would you say? Nine and nine is 18... Where am I? Oh, back at the bottom again. But I can, Uncle Mort. I can buy a practically brand new Bumblebee plane motor for $19 from Piggy Banks. It, what are Piggy Banks? They aren't anything. He's my pal. Ew. And this engine is such a bargain, I'm ashamed to buy it for that price. You needn't be ashamed, Leroy. You're not going to buy it. But, Uncle Mort... Young man, you're far too young to take up flying. But this is a miniature plane motor. It fits right in my model super-duper swooper. You... <laughs> Uh, oh, a model plane. Well, I forgot you were a flying bug. <laughs> That's a good one, Uncle Mort. Yeah. How's about that $19? Yeah. Now, hold on, Leroy. $19 is a lot of money. Oh, not for this motor, Uncle. Piggy never pop with it except his plane made an emergency landing into his pop store window. And he wants $19 for the motor? No, he wants $19 for a new window. Yeah. Can I have the dough, Uncle Mort? Well, I'm afraid not, Leroy. That's quite a large sum. And you know I've got to account to Judge Hooker for every penny you children spend. Oh, why can't he keep his nose out of our business? Uh, but that is his business, Leroy, sticking his nose into other people's. And he's got plenty of equipment for the job, too. <laughs> oh, but gee whiz, Uncle Mort. I bet you had a model airplane motor when you were my age. When I was your age, my boy, there were no airplanes. Everybody thought the Wright brothers were wrong. Well, <laughs> well uh, I bet you had some hobby. Uh, let me see. What did I have? Oh, yes, yes, I had dynamite. Dynamite? Yes, dynamite was the name of my Shetland pony. Oh. He was my hobby, that little horse. <laughs> I can see him now, bless his shaggy coat. Well, if, if you could have a big horse, Unc, why can't I have a little motor? Because I earned the money to buy dynamite, my boy. You earned 19 bucks? How'd you do it, huh? Well, uh, selling lobsters. I lived on the East Coast when I was a lad, and I got my spending money out of a string of lobster pots. 
I never knew lobsters grew in pots. Yes, they, they don't grow there, Leroy. That's how you catch them. I can still remember how hard it was in the winter. Getting up before dawn, rowing five miles, sometimes in a biting gale, just to tend my pots. Rowing back to market with my boat full of lobsters and my hands full of blisters, then walking five miles to school. <clears throat> yes. It's wonderful to think what you'll do when you're young and you want a pony. Say, whatever became of that pony? Well, I took dynamite to school one day and he bit the teacher. We didn't have school for a month. <laughs> 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 Gee, instead of a motor, maybe I should get a pony. Yeah? No, I guess not. I'll stick to aviation. There's more of a future in that. Yes. But, Leroy, I said I wasn't going to give you the money. Oh, that's all right, Uncle Mort. I'm going to earn it, just like you did. A splendid idea. <laughs> It'll help build your character, like it did mine. <clears throat> How are you going to do it? Oh, all I got to do is find a job and earn $19. Then would you let me buy Piggy's Bumblebee engine? I'll do better than that, my boy, seeing that you're so ambitious. I'll advance you the money out of my own pocket. You will? Yes, and you can pay me back as you earn it. Oh, gee, Uncle Mort. <laughs> You've got a heart as big as your... As big as you are, Uncle Mort. <laughs> and, and don't worry about me paying you back. Huh? I'll get a job in no time. Yeah. And the, uh, can I have the $19 now, Uncle Mort? Now? Yeah, Piggy's here with me. He can't go home until he gets the money. Oh, yes, I see. Well, here you are. Uh... Ten, fifteen, uh, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. Oh, thanks. Yeah. Hey, Piggy, it's a deal. Here's the dough. Yeah. Youth with its trivial problems. I wonder what kind of a job that boy will get. Need a boy? Oh, you don't. Need a boy? Oh, you don't. Yes, we have a morning paper route open. Got a bike? Sure. When do I start? Five o'clock tomorrow morning. Now, this is no sense job, young man. You've got to deliver those papers every morning, rain or shine. Now, do you think you can swing it? Oh, sure. I'm awfully reliable, mister. I take after my uncle. He used to get up every morning and roll five miles into the teeth of a gale and then roll five miles back. Oh, delivering papers? No, lobsters. Yeah. <clears throat> well, I guess you'll do. What's your name and address, young man? Leroy Forrester, 747 Parkside Avenue. Okay, Leroy. Now advance and take the early bird's pledge. <clears throat> Neither snow nor rain, nor hail nor flood shall stop the carriers of the Summerfield Indicator Vindicator from delivering their papers and collecting at the end of the month. I do. Good. Now wear this pin, your badge of honor as an early bird. And may its luster never be tarnished. No, sir. And remember, for every paper that isn't delivered before 7 a.m., you'll be Dr. Nickel. Strange. Leroy isn't usually late for dinner, is he, Bertie? No, ma'am. Dinner's usually late for him. Uh have you tried phoning any place? I don't know where. To... Well, how about this young friend of his, uh, Porky Pine? No, uh, Hogface something or other. <laughs> oh, yes, yes, Piggy Banks. Uh, what's his phone number? Let's call him, huh? I got a job! I got a job! Well, congratulations, my boy. What you doing getting jobs at supper time? Yeah. What kind of a job is it, Leroy? Delivering a paper route for the Indicator Vindicator. Well, isn't that peachy? Indicator Vindicator, huh? Yeah. When do you start? Tomorrow morning at 5 o'clock. 5 in the morning? Yeah. Did he say five? You hear what the boys say? Yeah. Yeah, that, that means I gotta get up at four. Oh, and... Leroy, you can't get up that early. Oh, yes, I can. I'll set all the alarm clocks in the house. Oh, and. <laughs> Leroy, I'm afraid you're a little too young for that sort of thing. <laughs> Maybe next year. Oh, but you had a much tougher job, won't you, Tony? But Uncle's a big man. Yeah. Well, he wasn't a man then. He wasn't even an uncle. You promised me I could do this. Uncle Mort, you promised me I could do it, and I promised the circulation manager. How'd it look if we both broke our promises? It looked better than getting up in the middle of the night. Yes, yes. Uh, I agree with you. Uh, this puts me in rather a bad spot, Leroy. What would Judge Hooker say about this? That it's building my character. Well... Now, I'd better go to bed if I'm going to get up at 4 o'clock. But you haven't had dinner yet. Okay, then, let's eat. What's delaying dinner, Bertie? What's delaying, he said. Look here, you, Leroy. We got ham for dinner, and whilst waiting for you, I frizzled it, defrizzled it, and refrizzled it until it's frazzled. <laughs> Oh, 
Are you dressed already, Leroy? Yep, up bright and early, Bertie. Hello, Bertie. Good morning, Leroy. Oh, don't look at me. I haven't had time to put on my makeup. I'm a sight. Gee, sis, I never knew you looked like that. <laughs> I like you better without makeup. <laughs> Looks like a skin rabbit to me. <laughs> no, stop. <laughs> have you had anything to eat, Leroy? Oh, yeah, I fixed myself a swell breakfast. What did you have? A ketchup sandwich and a peanut bar. <laughs> Land of Goshen, boy, that ain't no breakfast. I'm gonna fix you some pancakes. What was that? Oh, just a little drizzle. A little drizzle? Why, Leroy, it's coming down in buckets. Why? <coughs> Why, look at that street. It's flooded. Why, the water's running over the curb. You can't go out in weather like this. Oh, yes, I can. Neither snow nor rain nor hail nor flood shall stop the carriers of the indicator vindicator. I do. <laughs> You don't. Not this morning. Oh, gee, Marge, I got my rubber boots and my slicker and my rain cap out in the hall, and I'll be riding my bike. You're not going out in that rain. Oh, shucks. This is nothing to what Uncle Mort had a face when he was a boy. He used to row five miles out to sea in a lobster pot. <laughs> I don't care if he... Oh, Uncle Mort. Well, he could take out the car and drive you around. I'm going to wake him up right now. Oh, gee whiz. Who ever heard of a guy's uncle driving him around a paper route? Oh, Uncle Throckmorton. That's very good, Judge Hooker. <laughs> uncle Moore? Yeah. Uh, giddy up, dynamite. <laughs> uncle Moore, yeah. wake up. Wake up, Uncle Mort. Uh, well, uh, who's that? It's me, Marjorie. Uh, Marjorie who? Oh, Marjorie you. <laughs> yeah. Good night, Marjorie. <laughs> no. Wake up, Uncle. Uh, what's the matter? Fire? No, rain. Uh, hmm? <laughs> it's coming down in torrents, Uncle Mort. It is, huh? Yes. Well, don't try to stop it. No, 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 Uncle Mort, you've got to get up Yes, that's nice <laughs> Leroy insists on starting his job this morning And you've got to help him Yes, a very good point yeah. You must get the car out and drive him all over his paper route Yes, to build his character What? I do? <laughs> yes Now put on some clothes and come into the kitchen Bertie's fixing some coffee uh, But coffee will keep me awake Hurry now, Uncle Moore. Yes, all right. Uh, where's the light? Oh! What's wrong? I burned myself. That bulb is still hot. Why, Uncle Moore, what time did you get to bed? Well, I was reading a detective novel. It must have been about 3.30. What time is it now? Four. Oh, my. Why don't you go back to sleep? Leroy's waiting for you in the kitchen. Yes, bright boy. But if people don't get the papers, Leroy, they'll understand it because it's on account of the rain. Bertie's right, Leroy. No, no, look. I got almost a hundred customers. And if I don't deliver a hundred papers, I get docked a nickel apiece. That's five dollars. You do? Yeah, and suppose it rains steady for a week. Then I'll owe the company thirty-five bucks. Why, at that rate, it'll cost me a hundred and fifty dollars a month just not to deliver papers. <laughs> I can't afford it. <laughs> Uncle Mort is very kindly consented to drive you around, Leroy. Oh, gee, you shouldn't have disturbed him. He had it tough enough when he was a kid. He's entitled to some rest now. Uh, coffee. <laughs> Here you is, Mr. Gill, please. Thanks. Yeah, somebody hold the saucer. I think I can handle the cup. <laughs> Uncle Mort, but we'll have to hurry. Uh, hurry? Where are we going? You're driving Leroy around his paper route, Uncle Mort, because of the rain. Uh, you better put on something warmer than that bathrobe and them pajamas. You know, summer's all over. Yes. He won't have to get out of the car. Here's your overcoat, Uncle. That's all you'll need. Yes, uh, thank you. There, we're all set. Now let's go. Okay. Which way is the door? <laughs> right through here. Yes. Oh, it's raining. What am I doing out in the rain? <laughs> You're going to help me deliver my papers. Uh, papers? What papers? The man said they'd leave the bundle right here on the porch. Where? I can't see any... Oh! Hey, Uncle Mars. What? They left the papers all right. Yes! <laughs> In the name 
name of Pulitzer do they give you a newspaper route at the other end of town, Leroy? That was the only one open, Unc. Say, I bet this reminds you of the good old days. What good old days? You know, when you went out to the sea, lobster potting. Yeah. <laughs> By George, I wish I'd never brought those lobsters up. It, how much farther is it, Leroy? Oh, uh, just a block or two. Oh, no, stop right here. Yeah. Hey, here's my first customer. The Taj Mahal Bungalow Court. You... you just wait here while I deliver four papers. Yeah. Better turn on the radio or I'll fall asleep. And so if you're troubled with insomnia, why don't you trot right down to your nearest open all-night drug store and purchase a can of Dr. Dollop's delicious dream drop? Is that so? Yes. <laughs> And tell the druggist that Bert, the night clerk, sent you. Yes. And after you've taken a dozen drops, you'll doze into a delightful delirium from... That guy would put an owl to sleep. <laughs> okay, Uncle Mort. Drive straight ahead to the next corner. Yes. Yeah. Now turn right. Right. Oh, careful of that milk wagon, Uncle Mort. What milk wagon? I don't... Oh! 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 Yeah, whoa. Hey, you! Uh, what are you doing in the middle of the road? I uh, parked against the curb, you big chowderhead. Oh! Now, see here, don't you talk to me that way, or I'll, I'll pasteurize you, you little half pint feather. Look out, Uncle Mort, he ain't so little. He ain't? I, I mean, he isn't? Oh, well, he can't frighten me. I got a good notion to report you to the police. Skipping around that corner and smacking up against my wagon and shoving my horse into a mailbox. I didn't mail your horse. Oh? Uh, huh? <laughs> Yes, he's shaking up my milk, too. Well, that's good. Why don't you stay home nights like respectable folks? No, see here. I'm always having trouble with you playboys. Playboys? What do you mean? Why don't you come up the street? There, now, see what you did? You woke up all my customers. I did not. You woke them up yourself. Uh, let's get out of here, Uncle yes. Mort. I still got a lot of papers to deliver. Yes, that's right. Let's get out of here. It's too noisy. The nerve of that milkman parked in the dark. And by Jove, he didn't have his taillight burning, did he, Leroy? I didn't notice. Well, he didn't. I think I'll go right back and... Oh, no, 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 we haven't got time, Uncle. Yeah. We've just been out for 15 minutes, and I'm already half an hour behind schedule. Yeah. <laughs> Lucky for that milkman that you are. I'm just beginning to think of some things I should have told him. Funny, they always come just five minutes too late. <laughs> you better watch where you're going, Uncle Mort. The water's pretty deep here. Uh, you might get off the road. Uh, does seem to be getting uh, deeper, doesn't it? Yep. Uh, throw your flashlight on that sign over there, Leroy. Sure. Uh, can you read it? What does it say? Warning! No fishing allowed. Oh! Oh, my goodness, a lake. Uh, where's the street? I better turn around. Uh, it's back that way. Yes, I see it now. We'll be on dry land in a moment. Oh, oh. Uh, we're in a hole. Uh, hole? <laughs> uh, don't worry, Leroy. Everything's going to be all right. Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, I think the carburetor's flooded with water. Boy, now we are in a hole. Yeah. I wonder what we can do now. Uh, well, I... Uh, oh, boy! Huh? We're going to get a break, Uncle Mort. Somebody's coming down the street. Well... Hey, mister, will you pull us out? Sure, partner. Oh, Nelly. Oh, Nelly. Oh. oh. Say, ain't this the car that ran into me over on Quinn Avenue? <laughs> yes, but... Wow. Uh... <laughs> If you haven't got more brass than the Marine Band, asking me to pull you out. Yes, but I'm willing to pay you. No, thanks. Giddy up, Nelly. <laughs> Go jump in your milk, both of you. It's getting pretty late, Uncle Martin. We still have a lot of papers to deliver. What are we going to do? Well, the car won't move, Leroy. Looks like we'll have to travel the rest of the way on foot. And I'm wearing bedroom slippers. Well... At least it stopped raining. Come on, Leroy. You take that bundle and I'll carry the rest. Ooh! <laughs> the water is cold. <laughs> you want me to carry a piggyback, Uncle Moore? There's no time for joking, Leroy. Oh, good gravy. It's starting to rain again. Uncle Mort, just 12 more papers to deliver and we're through. Hi, uh, George. I'm soaked to the marrow. And on me, that's pretty far down. <laughs> Here, 
Here's 2100 Burnside. It's your turn to put it on the poor junk. That's a long walk up there, Leroy, and I'm rapidly reaching the end of my tether. Suppose I just throw it up on the porch, huh? Oh, no, no, you can't do that. Us yeah. early birds aren't allowed to throw papers, Uncle Mort. Well, I'm no early bird. I'll bet my aim is still pretty good, too. Oh, but we've got orders. Oh, it's all right. Just this once, huh? Watch me place it on the porch. Yep. There it goes. Oh, oh, gee. It hit a window on the second floor. I told you. It Let's not go- stand around, Leroy. We delivered the paper, didn't we? Come on, quick. We might as well get going. Operator. Operator. Where's that operator? Get me the police department at once. Hello, police. This is Judge Hooker at 2100 Burnside. An attempt has just been made on my life. Somebody threw something wrapped in a newspaper through my window. It might be a bomb. I'm trying a gangster in my court, and his mob is probably trying to rub me out. Get him at all costs. Spread out a dragnet. Do something. Attention, all cars. Proceed to 21st and Burnside Streets. Judge Hooker's home has been bombed. Stop and question everyone. Investigate all parked cars. Bring all suspicious characters to headquarters. That is all. Rosenblatt. Oh, listen to those sirens, Leroy. Must be some excitement around here. I wonder what... Uh, uh, did you sneeze, Uncle Morris? What does it sound like? Sounds like you're catching a cold. Oh. I only got four more papers to deliver. Why don't you go home from here? Oh, no, I wouldn't run out on you. If, well, if you insist, that's a different matter. Maybe I'd better get into some dry clothes. Oh, huh? sure. Just go straight down 21st Street to Parkside. So long. Yeah, so long, Leroy. See you at home. Oh, it's as cold as Judge Hooker's heart, and I'm as wet as a mad hen. I wonder if those policemen would mind giving me a lift home. Well, nothing ventured, nothing gained. Uh... Hey, uh, officer? Yeah? Uh, Hello, officer. I wonder if you're going my way. I'm all wet. I'll say you're all wet. Why don't you call a cab, mister? Well, you know how cabs are. They're like policemen. Anytime you need one, you can never find... Oh, what am I saying? <laughs> uh, present company accepted, of course. <laughs> Where have you been, buddy? Uh, oh, uh, hello. Uh, two of you. Well, uh, uh, I, I've been out delivering morning papers. Delivering papers and pajamas and bedroom slippers? Uh, an overcoat, don't forget. What do you think, Joe? Smells. Smells to me, too. Well, I assure you, officers, it's true. I, I did it all for my little nephew's character. Uh, we're building it, you know. <laughs> it was raining too hard for him to take his bicycle, so I, I drove him around. Yeah? Where's your car? It, it broke down. Where? Well, I can't tell you exactly, but it was right near a, a no-fishing sign. Yeah? Well, where's your nephew? Uh, he went that way. <laughs> Say, fellows, I'm terribly cold. Uh, couldn't you give me a lift? What do you think, Joe? Okay. Get in. Uh, oh, thanks very much. Ooh, uh, a gun. <laughs> yes. I hope this isn't going to be out of your way, boys. I live at 747 Parkside. Got it, Joe? Sure. Oh, Ooh, but you're headed the wrong way, Joe. Oh, no, I'm not, buddy. I'm headed for police headquarters. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Now, Mr. Gildersleeve, you say your aim wasn't very good. Yes, Judge Rand. I hadn't had much sleep, and, well, I had the wind and the rain and my hair and my eyes. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And so, instead of uh, throwing the paper on this man's porch, you broke an upstairs window. Yes. I was trying to throw a curve, Your Honor. Mm -hmm. Well, Mr. Gildersleeve, your story sounds reasonable, and if you'll just wait in the sergeant's office till he can check it... Oh, gladly. I think you'll be able to go home in an hour or less. I want to thank you, Judge Rand, for being so nice to me. I hear you caught the man who tried to kill me. Let's get a look at him. Here, here, one moment. This is a police court, not a pool room. Who are you? Judge Hooker, Superior Court, Department 25. Well, I'm Justice of the Peace Rand of Sunrise Court. Take off your hat. Oh, excuse me. I'm a little excited. My life's been threatened, and I want to confront the coward who... Gildersleeve. Yeah, hello, Judge Hooker. Do you know this man? Of course. What's he doing here? Well, we picked him up near your place. He's the one... Uh Uh-huh. I see it all now. You were trying to... I was not. Don't lie. Order. Order. Yes, order. Order in the court. Order. Now, Gildersleeve, you better make a clean breast of it. Confess... 
and I might be inclined to be more lenient. Say, wait a second. It's all right, it's all right. I'm trying this case. Now, tell me, Gildersleeve, what was in that newspaper you threw into my bedroom? I don't know what was in it, Judge. I didn't read it. <laughs> now, Judge Hooker, I've heard this man's story. I'll listen I... to you later. Gildersleeve, you're guilty of breaking and entering my home. But, Judge, I've never been in your home. You threw something, didn't you? Yes, but... And it broke something and entered somewhere, didn't it? Yes, Then, but... by your own admission, you're guilty, and by virtue of the laws of the state, I hereby sentence you to one year. One moment, Judge Hooker. This isn't your court. I'm the judge here, and I'm capable of running things. Uh, all right, all right. I don't want to tell you your business. Then don't. <clears throat> now, Mr. Gildersleeve, I don't think it's necessary to question your word any further. You broke Judge Hooker's window. Is that right? Yes, sir. And for that, Mr. Gildersleeve, I'm going to require you to pay for installing a new window. Uh, yes, sir. Is that all you're going to do? No, not quite. Well, that's better. I've never before seen such disregard for the dignity of a courtroom. Of the rights of others, as you've shown here this morning, Judge Hooker. Who, me? Yes, and I'm going to cite you for contempt of court. What? $25 fine or 30 days in jail. <laughs> yeah, this is wonderful. <laughs> The great Gildersleeve will be with us again in a few minutes. But right now, I wonder what the parquet margarine users who are listening in would say if I asked them why they like parquet. Well, it's a pretty good guess that they like parquet first because of its delicious flavor. And a good many would answer, too, that they like parquet because they can use it so many ways. Yes, parquet margarine is so good tasting, you'll be proud to serve it at your table. And for the same reason, you like it for seasoning, for baking, and for pan frying, too. Why, more and more these days, good cooks are insisting on a flavor shortening for baking. A shortening that adds its own tempting taste to cookies, cakes, and pastries. And a flavor shortening is just what parquet margarine is. You'll find parquet's flavor makes it a delicious seasoning for hot vegetables, too. And a grand fat for pan frying that doesn't spatter or stick to the pan. And whether you use parquet margarine at the table, for seasoning as a flavor shortening, or for pan frying... Don't forget, parquet is a nutritious food and a reliable year-round source of vitamin A. Now, when you go to your food store, don't just ask for margarine. Ask for parquet margarine made by Kraft. Remember, Kraft's reputation for quality backs every pound of parquet. So be sure to say parquet margarine. It's made by Kraft. <laughs> You know, Leroy, I don't think this paper route was such a good idea after all. Uh, I wish you'd uh, give it up. Well, I wanted to talk to you about uh, that, If Uncle you quit Mort. this job, I'll pay for that motor myself. Well, thanks, Uncle Mort, but... Now, stop I... interrupting, Leroy. I'll even buy you the most expensive model plane there is, if you don't carry papers anymore. Oh, but, Jim... Now, make to... up your mind, Leroy. Will you take my offer? Well, if you feel that way about it, okay. Fine. Yeah. Now, what were you going to say? I was trying to tell you, Uncle Mort... I was fired this morning. What? <laughs> yeah. Good night. <laughs> You have probably heard that September 15th to 20th is Retailers for Defense Week. During this week, your regular food dealer will be selling defense stamps. When shopping, you can help this patriotic cause by taking your change in defense stamps. Original music heard on this program was composed and conducted by William Randolph. This is Jim Bannon speaking for the Kraft Cheese Company and inviting you to be with us again next week at this same time for further adventures of The Great Gildersleeve. This is the National Broadcast.